What's up guys, today we're going to add a feature to our Pong game, completely optional, completely cosmetic, it doesn't affect how it works, but it's nice to have math and mechanics and things like that in your games, it's also nice to have art and creativity in your games, they make people happy and they also work with the mechanics in a way, if you want your players to notice something you can give them a little ding or a satisfying spark when they pick up an item if you want your players to avoid a certain thing you can give them an ugly sound or an ugly image now right now we left off with this two-player pong it's a little janky in the frame rate right now but otherwise it works just fine and what i'm going to add is a shock wave whenever the ball bounces off the paddles or the top or bottom, it's going to add a little shock wave that fades after half a second or something. It's not distracting, it's not like random fish in the background or something, it's part of the mechanics. You want your player to bounce things in Pong, so you give them a little reward of a pretty picture when they do. And I got this idea from a guy named The Fluffy Potato, which is a great name in his video that I showed in class about adding features. The idea is that whatever the feature is, you break it down into steps, and you break those steps down into steps, and after a while you've got code, and all you have to do is write it. The shockwave is a circle, which is the first thing we ever did, drawing a circle with our ball, and it's different in that it only lasts for a short time, and in that time it changes. You know, it stretches out and also gets thinner to fade away. Let's see how we might implement that. The ball class is going to need to create the shockwave. Whenever it bounces on something, it's going to make a little new object or change some data, however we do it. But after that, it's done. It doesn't care about the shockwaves. It doesn't check back with them later and see how they're doing. It's just creating it, and that's a small bit of code. The paddle doesn't care at all. In fact, I shrunk this and got it out of the way, but you can expand it with the little button here. It'll be some kind of object. However, shockwaves are not persistent. Like these guys, we create the ball and the paddles, and those are just there forever. But with a shockwave, we're going to create one, and then another, and then another, and we don't want to really care about the individual ones. We don't want to give them names or anything. So instead I'm going to make a list. I'm going to have a list of shockwaves that starts out empty. And then in our main loop I'm going to say, well, if there are any, you're going to go through those and do the thing. It's going to have an update method. Not because it's mandatory. It's not, but I'm just going to follow the pattern I did with the other guys where the update method is like compiling all the chores it does every frame, all the things it needs to move through. So let's do it. You don't really need a class for this. You could just have a couple pieces of data in a tuple or something, but I like practicing making a class. And it's going to be pretty similar to the ball because it's a circle and it has an X and Y. And in fact, I'm just going to copy paste these guys. That's dangerous because there might be something I miss that should change. But it's also nice because I will type less. It's going to have an X and Y, and we're going to put it in a certain location. OK. Is it going to have velocity? No, they don't move. The shockwave moves in the sense of expanding, but its center is always the same center. And it doesn't have a hitbox because it doesn't interact with anything. It's just purely visual flourish. Now, it has one other thing, which is the border, because we're going to draw it as like not a solid circle, but uh, outline, and the border outline will have different thickness. I'm going to make up a number right now and we'll change it later. Whenever you draw a circle in Pygame, you need where it is, what color, and then the center radius. You can also optionally add another thing for the border. I'm going to leave that off for the moment because I want to test a simplified version first. So we're going to have an update method, and what are we going to do in there? Every frame we're going to say um, hide and show, just like the other objects, meaning, okay, we put the background back, and then we redraw it in a new spot after some stuff. 
that's not the only way to do it. And some of the examples we've seen from other people, they will fill the screen with black every frame and then draw all the stuff on, on top of it. Um, whereas I have it fill once and then delete and redraw things. It's a little bit similar to backgrounds and sprites that we're going to use later. I think it kind of makes more sense to do it this way just to set our brains up for that, but it's fine either way. It's totally reasonable. So what are we going to do in between the self and hide? Well, we're going to increase the radius as our shockwave expands. We're going to decrease the border as it thins out. And then probably um, if the border is zero, then we're going to get rid of it. We're going to, you know, if the thing's going to die, it's going to get removed from the list or whatever. However, I don't want to do all that right now because I hate to type a lot and then test it after a huge, after we've gone down a huge road and we find it hard to go back and change things. So I want to make a simplified version to test and it's just going to be a solid circle in a spot not fulfilling all the details until later. But I want to be able to say, hey, is this thing being created when the ball bounces? And it'll just go boop with a single solid blob. And then later we'll make it look pretty. So I don't want to get into the weeds on that just yet. Let's zoom over here and say whenever the ball bounces, we're going to create a shockwave. So how do we do that? Well, we just add it to the list. The list is already ready and it's already getting updated every frame if there are any guys in it. So the ball just has to say, let's add one to the list. And then it doesn't care. It doesn't track what they're doing. It doesn't remember what they're doing. It just says, you're on your own, buddy. So I'm going to go shock waves, which is the list, dot append. Um, and then when we create a shock wave, we need x and y. So Ideally, it would be right at the edge of the ball where it hits the thing, but right now I'm just going to make it the center of the ball because that's quicker and easier. So I'm going to say we're going to add one at the spot. And then I'm going to do that here and here. And this is not perfect at all. It's not in the right spot because we want it on the edge. It's not changing shape or whatever, but I want to test something. You want to test as early as possible just to make sure you're not completely getting things wrong. So let's hit run. Oh, appendix one argument two given. Oh, I never even said what the thing is. I'm supposed to be appending a shockwave with those arguments, not just two random numbers. Okay. So look at that. That is doing what we want, right? Every time it bounces, it's leaving a shockwave. And the shockwave doesn't do anything yet. It doesn't look cool or expand or fade. But this is a good test because it's saying, hey, we are adding the thing to the list. The list is displaying every frame. It is triggering in the right spot, or at least close to the right spot. And now we can work on making it pretty and accurate and all of that. But imagine if we typed. 10 more things here and then finally got to test it, we would be in a bad position if it didn't work. So you always want to like shift what you're doing, make little uh, sacrifices to make things testable as early as you can, I think. Now, um, what are we going to do here? We're going to say this needs to be changed. We want to come back and make it appear at the edge of the ball instead of the center of the ball. but I'm okay with this for now. We'll come back in a minute. And right now we want to do the shock wave where it gets bigger and it fades away over the next, you know, half second or something. So these seem pretty easy. Increase radius. We can just say radius plus equal one or self dot radius plus equal one and then self dot border minus equal one. And then Let's say uh, that's almost code already. You know, if border less than zero, uh, we're going to remove it from the list. Maybe shockwaves.remove self. That seems reasonable. 
I don't know exactly how that works in memory. Like we're removing it from the list, which saves it from having to go through this stuff. But maybe the object still exists. Maybe we want to come back and delete it later. Or maybe Python does that on its own. I would have to look into that. I'm sure it's fine for now. So let's see what happens if we try this. It's going to be... Oh, border's not defined because I always forget self dot. Okay. Now, oh, that's pretty good. It is expanding and it is stopping. But, oh, look at that. It got stuck. Sometimes if it's right on the edge, it kind of gets one pixel deep inside the pa uh, paddle instead of bouncing off right away. But this is better, right? This is moving in the right direction. And now what we need to do is add that optional argument right here to say self dot border and then probably here too although I don't think it matters as much now let's hit run see this this is good right we add a little thing test a little thing test if we tried to do it all and then run you'd be lost if you didn't get it right away so let's say hey that's pretty good right that's pretty close to what I had in mind with this initial um, round of this it bounces, it still bounces exactly the same, but now it leaves a little shockwave. However, I want to change two things. One, I want to make it last a little longer. And two, I want to make it at the right spot. So let's say instead of the middle of the ball, it's going to be the left or the right or this top or bottom. For um, our hitbox, it's a rect, which I know sounds silly using a rectangle for the ball's hitbox. We'll have to change that later when we get to fancier stuff, but for now it's okay. So the lovely thing about a rect is that it has all these built-in um, properties, like you can say top left, bottom right, whatever, and it'll know what that means. So we don't have to calculate. We don't have to say self.x minus self.radius or whatever. We can just say self.hitbox dot something so this is the right the right edge of the ball hitting the right paddle so we're going to say uh, mid right and then uh, I'm going to put an asterisk because this is a tuple I think it needs to be split into two separate things for this guy and this is going to be the left side of the ball hitting the left paddle so it's going to be mid left and I, don't worry, I never remember that. You don't have to remember that. Just Google Pygame Racked and then look at the list, you know. So we're going to go top left or, or no, mid top or mid bottom for bouncing on the top or bottom. However, this doesn't work for that because this is packaged into one. This is if it hits the top or bottom, it reverses direction, which works for that, but it doesn't work for our next ambition. So we're going to have to split it up. So I'm going to say, all right, that's a separate thing. And that'll be filled in in a minute. Now this is going to go self.hitbox. This is the top, mid top. And this guy is going to go here. And then it's going to be mid bottom. Let's try that. Let's hit run and see what happens. And yeah, I like that. That's way better because it's like actually on the edge of the ball instead of coming out of the middle of the ball. The collision is supposed to be, you know, where it hits and not just the object. Like if you uh, land on the floor, then your feet are the collision. It's not like your center of gravity or something. So that's a lot better right away. And then the last thing is I want to make these last a little bit longer. I want to make these shockwaves bigger and, and, and sort of stretch farther. However, it's not super easy because this border thing is the limit, right? It starts at 20, which is just a number we made up, and then it goes down one per frame. I can't make this less. I couldn't say 0.5 or else it would say, hey, do you want to turn the whole thing to a float? And I'd go, nah, it's not worth the trouble. So I could make this start bigger, but I think it would look weird because it would look like a donut instead of a nice, thin, sparky... Yeah, that's ugly. I mean, you can do it. This is all an artistic matter of taste, but it's ugly. 
So I'm going to bring this back to 20, or we can fine tune it. And I'm going to make this thing happen less often. So I want to make it like, you know, every three frames or something instead of every frame. So the way I'm going to do that is to just have a counter and, or no, counter, it doesn't start here. It changes here. So it's going to go minus equal one. And then if counter is zero, we do this and we also um, bring it back to, let's say two, which would mean two, one, zero, two, one, zero. So it happens every three frames. And I can't just use counter on its own. It's going to have to be self because it has to persist. It's not only in the moment this method runs. It has to be something that starts out with a value and uh, remembers it the next time we come back here. So let's try that. And I think that's going to be a lot prettier than the donut version we had. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's so much nicer. The next step, which I won't do here because this video is already long enough, the next step would be IMO um, colors. We'd want to make it like different if it bounces off a paddle versus if it bounces off the edge. Maybe player one could be blue and player two could be red or something. So then you get that feedback. It feels like you're really having an effect on the world when you play the game. You're like, oh yeah, I did it right and I got a little blash, blast of red, you know. That kind of thing makes the players feel involved. So I would have this be, instead of something hard-coded, it would be a new um, parameter for the init. And then we would say, OK, this one's red, this one's white, this one's blue, whatever, to set it up differently there. And that would be a nice addition for the next step.